Introduction to Psalm 94 Psalm 94 is an appeal which pleads for support by God's divine intervention with retribution against the iniquitous. Prophetically, from a dispensational view, it relates to a plea from the remnant of Israel in their time of trouble, which precedes the formation of Christ's kingdom on earth after the Great Tribulation. The psalm speaks of another, albeit, the familiar instance of a good man who is perplexed by the prosperity of the ungodly and then still continues on, able to cheer his heart and soul by remembering that there is, after all, a king in heaven, by whom all things are overruled for good. In this prophetic perspective, Psalms 94 to 100 form a series that tell a consecutive story. These seven glorious psalms are kingdom songs celebrating the upcoming reign of the Messiah. They are a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ and his future reign on earth following the period of the Great Tribulation and all the judgments that will come upon humanity during that seven-year period. That said, at the time of the psalmist's writing, he sees evildoers in power and recoils under their oppression. His insight of God's divine sovereignty that the previous psalms reiterated, leads him to appeal to his God as the great judge of the earth. This he does with much vehemence and vigor, evidently seething under a tormenting tyranny of the oppressor. He does not doubt God's existence and remains confidently assured of God's personal observation concerning the depraved doings of irreverent men, the psalmist rebukes his atheistic adversaries and joyously proclaims the inevitable victory of his God. In Psalms 94 7 the psalmist utters his complaint against wicked oppressors and in verses 8 to 11 he reasons against their skeptical notion that God did not notice the actions of men. He then shows that the Lord does bless his people and will deliver them, though for a while they may be chastened. So, the psalm is a prayer and an appeal to God, to the God of vengeance as well as to a God of justice and righteousness. Specifically, verses 1 and 2 are a statement of the character and schemes of the wicked that were bringing these calamities upon the nation. Then, in verses 3 to 7, there is a direct appeal to God about the conduct of the invaders themselves. It is an appeal based on the fact that the God of Israel could not be indifferent to the conduct of people, that he must hear their words, understand their thoughts, see their acts, and know all that they did. In the balance of these verses, 12 to 15, he again pleads for help. In verse 16, he declares his entire dependence upon God for preservation. In 17 to 19, yet a third time, he utters his complaint. Verse 20 through 21, then concludes with the confident assurance that his enemies and all other wicked men would certainly be made to reap the due reward of their deeds, yeah, the Lord our God shall cut them off. The object of the psalm is to show that God is the protector of his people, that he does regard them, that he will interpose in their behalf.